Hey, everybody. Uh, looks like we're back into strange Appalachia season. I know that uh, the summer's winding down, and uh, JD just got back in from his summer job. So uh, we can get this thing back up and running. I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, I know that there for a while we were trying to do at least one a month, but with JD out on the road, it's been pretty hard. So uh, uh, we're just going to jump right into this thing, I think. Um, JD, you want to start out with some news of the weird? Sure. Uh, but I will say now that I'm back from uh, summer camp that I think uh, I think we could be able or should be able to hit that uh, one one a month mark. Um, so maybe we do, we shoot from one a month, except for summer months, take those off. Yeah. But it's really hard in the summer. I mean, it, it is. We, we, we got so much stuff going on. It's, it's crazy, but, uh, yeah. So some, some strange news that I was sent this week, uh, a good friend of mine, Chris Higgins sent me a link to a news article from Ohio where a lady has, uh, in the past, somewhere, I think it said like seven or eight years ago, she had seen a Bigfoot uh, or, or the glimpsed a Bigfoot running across her property um, and had a lot of wood knocking and weird noises that happened at night. And she bought a recorder to record that stuff. And uh, abruptly, all the stuff stopped and she left the recorder going in the meantime anytime that she wasn't here i think the article said she had actually accumulated something like twenty thousand hours of audio which is just insane to think about but i i would imagine it doesn't take very long for that to add up um <clears throat> but anyway she uh was recently reviewing it and heard uh what she claimed were bigfoot calls uh off in the distance and uh so that's sort of what the news story was about is that this uh according to her these big foots or big feet big foots is whatever we determined the plural of bigfoot was uh had returned to her area um so it was a really interesting article uh and it did have a link to the audio file and she had sent it to some uh some audio experts or some mammal call experts and they came back with the the it, it's not a hundred percent match but it sounded to them like a alpha coyote calling its pack and there's definitely some coyote noises going on in the background and to me that is what it sounds like uh, again it's not a hundred percent match but it could be just some poor audio quality because uh, it is a cheap recorder uh, and they even point that out in the the article that it's not an expensive device. So uh, you know, in, in my opinion, it's a coyote, but uh, you know, definitely some some strange news out there. Uh, anytime you see Ohio and Bigfoot together, that that tends to be good stuff because you know that's where the grass man is and all that good good kind of thing. So uh, yeah, the Ohio grass man, you know, that's one of the more popular Bigfoot stories that's out there. You hear about them a whole lot. Absolutely. Um, speaking of calls, thing. we're definitely getting some cicadas in the background from Charlie, so that's pretty cool too. Yeah, I'm outside recording tonight. Um, there's no telling what all we're going to hear. Um, I know that that Ohio grass man. Uh, Ohio is not ever a place that I really ever thought about being mountainous, but there is a lot of forest in Ohio. Yeah. You know, it's kind of weird to think about it as a place for Bigfoot, but it's, you know, they're supposedly all over the place up there. I know that usually, they're, like every other video, you see them in the background walking by. I've seen several videos of uh, people either out on ATV uh, trails riding or uh, just walking through fields, and you'll see well, there's like a person walking around in behind them, and they have no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a pretty neat story. Um once again, I'm, I tend to agree with you that it's just a bunch of coyotes, but, you know, you never know. Yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye on it for sure. Um, but speaking of Ohio cryptids, that leads us into our uh, sort of main feast for the night. And this is uh, the Loveland Frog or Loveland Frogman or Loveland Lizard. Uh, it goes by several names. And... 
this is exciting for the two of us because this is actually our first one, as far as I can remember, that has been requested uh, from a listener, correct? That's correct. And, you know, I went back and tried to find her name, and I couldn't find it in the comments at all. Huh. But she, it was, it, she specifically requested the, the Loveland Frog. She said that she wanted to get our, our take on it, and so uh, uh, we decided to do this one next. And, you know, I apologize. I don't have your name. Uh, I went back through the comments and, and looked around for it and couldn't find it. So if something happens, if J.D., you happen to find it, uh, we'll give you a shout-out in the middle of the show. Sure. So if um, you want to if you want to tell the story and and sort of give us some background on that, um, then we'll get our take on it from there. Yeah. So uh, uh, I know we've both done a little bit of research on this, uh, but it, in 1972, outside of a little town called Loveland, Ohio, um, a police officer reported seeing a four and a half foot tall, well he described frog man, uh, jump over a railing. Um, he filled out a, a report on it and everything. Um, and it coming from a police officer, you know, that gives it a little bit more credibility, or it should give it a little bit more credibility. Um, but, yeah, he said he saw it leap over a railing and into the Ohio River. And if you remember our episode on uh, uh, the Lizard Man, that, that's one of the rivers that the Lizard Man supposedly lives in. So, so let me interrupt you real quick here. Uh, just going back real quick her name was bethany hunley hey you found it i did awesome well so bethany this episode's for you um um and it's a good story i'm glad you called it out it's one of my favorite stories um i love all these lizard man and frog man stories that that run around the the appalachians because you know it's just such a weird thing to to even think about seeing in in the appalachian area I always like to see during the research of them, the different pictures of them that people have made, like the 3D rendered pictures, because they're all absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely. This one right here, they've got this giant frog standing up beside a person so you can get a, a size comparison. And the uh, the frog picture is, I don't know. I don't know who came up with it, but it's pretty good. Yeah. No, I, I think we're looking at the same picture. It, uh, it's an interesting idea. I mean, you know, I'm making fun of it a little bit, you know, for how goofy looking it is. But it's something that, you know, if you saw that, you would not mistake that. Nothing else looks like that. No, it doesn't. Um, and so to continue with the story, this is what J.D.'s leading into, I think. Um, about two weeks later, another officer saw the thing and shot it and actually killed it. And brought the body in, and it was an iguana uh, that was missing its tail. And so, you know, I don't know how you can get a frog from an iguana, especially a four and a half foot tall frog, because it it's not going to look anything at all like an iguana. Mm -hmm. And it, like JD, we were talking about this before the the show. You know, an iguana that gets its tail cut off is not going to be four and a half foot long. Yeah, so that's not going to be one of my big points is, you know, the, the, there's the iguana body that was brought in, didn't have a tail. And while it is absolutely possible for an iguana to be four and a half, five feet long, that's counting its tail. So if you cut its tail off, you're not looking at a four and a half foot tall iguana. You're looking at a probably two to three foot iguana. Um, yeah. Which maybe is not a big difference. You know, if you see it at a distance and you're estimating, um, maybe that extra foot to two feet is not that hard to miss. Um, but just in my head, if it's close enough that you're shooting at it, um, I don't know. Another the, thing is, is it supposedly escaped into water and... You know, iguanas aren't known for escaping into water. They're typically climbing animals. Right. They're they're definitely not swimmers, unless, you know, you're out on some Galapagos Island somewhere. Right. And, you know, the, the other part of that is, you know, if, if this uh, sheriff or this police officer shot a two-foot tall iguana, it's pretty daggone good shooting. 
Yeah. That does not provide a large target. I don't, no. I don't know why that just popped into my head thinking about that. Well, I mean, if he was pretty close to it, you know. Yeah. Which there's no telling what, what the whole situation was. Also, I read a story about some school kids that supposedly saw it. Um, there were supposedly two children that saw it as well. Is that the 2016 sighting, maybe? Maybe it is. I couldn't get a date on it. I just saw, just read it through the article and said that there were two school children that saw it. Let's see if I can find a date on that real quick. Um, mm. Let's see. Yeah, it's while well, you're looking for that. It, it just seems to me, yeah, 2016, uh, two teenagers playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Podly enough. Um, yeah. So, hey. Not what, not what you would expect. No. Uh, found a real-life Pokemon there. Yeah. So, here's here's another legend. It says, uh, according to various legends, the creature was first sighted by a businessman or a traveling salesman driving along an unnamed road late at night in 1955. Uh, it says, with some variations of the story specifying the month of May. In one story, the driver was heading out to Branch Hill neighborhood when he spotted three figures stood, stood, stood erect sorry, uh, on their hind legs along the road, and they were three to four each and four feet tall in height. Can't read tonight. And said so they had a leather, leathery skin and frog faces. Uh, in other versions, it was spotted under over a poorly lit bridge. And then one says that it held a wand that it waved over its head and sprayed sparks. Now, that's not in the original story by any stretch of the imagination. You know, the original police officer just saw it jump a guardrail and yeah. hit the water. <clears throat> so the other thing, a lot of the uh, the original sightings of this thing um, report it. They're estimating the, the frogman weighed between 50 and 75 pounds. And even iguanas that get four foot long are not 50 pounds. I mean, they're 15, 20 pounds at the most. Right. Um, so I, I don't know if the the uh, the iguana just doesn't make sense to me. But at the same time, looking at it realistically, Frogman makes less sense than iguana. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, it's a hard one to get a take on. Yeah. I mean, with especially so not many... having any direct interaction with it right and with so many other cryptids out there you know that also match that description yeah i mean it's too bad they didn't have a a wagon with a tarp over it yeah that's true a push cart i mean I don't, I don't know how to make this one i i kind of think that that i mean there's a part of me that, that thinks that it's just a misidentification you know the first cop could have saw it and I mean, police officers are human too, you know. He panicked, you know, and then he he didn't know what to make of it, and so that's what he came up with was a giant frog. Yeah, um, I mean that makes sense, uh, you know, logically thinking. That's that's going to have to be what I go with, um, because without direct evidence, I'm not going with frog man. No, that's that's a pretty steep limb to, to climb out on or a pretty narrow limb to climb out on. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with it was an iguana, but there's just a lot of. A lot of issues with the story of it's an iguana. Yeah, especially when uh, the cop that shot it, when he brought it back to the station, um, the cop that originally saw it. Uh, I dated he said that that's 100 percent what he saw. Right. So, you know, sounds like it's just an iguana. And what's funny is in the original story, that part was omitted. The part where the cop shot it and brought it yeah. in and the other cop identified it. So you know, they, maybe the more important part of this story that we're sort of skipping over is they was some some weird stuff happening in the early to mid 70s in the state of Ohio. Yeah, I mean, it sounds this like all over the country. country. Yeah, sounds like all over the country everything was going crazy. Yeah, because I mean, in the mid, early to mid seventies, you've got the 
the one of the original Grassman sightings, I think, happened there. And then this thing, I think there was a uh, Mothman sighting in Ohio around that time. Well, I know that the the cryptid craze, you know, the early cryptid craze in the 1900s, which sounds weird to say, but, you know, the early cryptid craze, man, people were seeing them everywhere. And, you know, it started out like Bigfoot and then the UFOs that they saw skipping out in California that weren't really flying saucers. Right. You know, they, they were more, they just said they skipped like saucers on water. And that right. opened up the UFO craze in the 50s and 60s, you know. I think a lot of the stuff people people really want this mystery out there and especially then because you know the world was kind of becoming a smaller place Mm -hmm. and so you know people tend to cling to stuff like that um i did read a cool report this week about uh a cryptid not a lot of people talk about have you ever heard of the hide behind no okay so the hide behind um it's a cryptid that supposedly you catch them out of the corner of your eyes um, and they hide in forests behind trees and they just kind of peek out at you. And anytime lumberjacks would go missing, they would blame hide behinds for it. Supposedly the hide behind would come out and grab them and drag them off and eat them. And so, you know, they have a lot of different ways this thing is drawn. Some people draw it like a Bigfoot, you know, and some people draw it like, um, something that looks like trees. Um, some people draw it as a long, lanky creature. Um, they put the Wendigo skull on it. Everybody now likes the Wendigo skull, the deer skull. Yeah, I've seen them drawn like that. Um, but basically, it was a it was a creature that was supposedly seen hiding behind trees, and that's where the name "hide behind" came from. Hmm. Um, I read a report of a lady. She said she was in a national forest here in Tennessee, and she didn't name it specifically, but I'm going to assume it's the Great Smoky Mountains. I think and that's the only national forest there is in Tennessee. I'm pretty, yeah, probably is. Um, but she said she was walking along a trail and something kept peeking out from behind trees. And when I was reading the comments of her, under a story, a guy brought up the hide behind. And I'd read accounts of them before, but I didn't get the full story. And so um, a lot of people in the forum that I was reading tend, tend to believe that maybe it was a juvenile Bigfoot that was peeking out at her. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know... I've had experiences like that where we've been hiking or, or out in the woods and, you know, woods are kind of a weird place anyway, even if you get used to them, they're still kind of a weird place, but you know, sometimes you'll feel like you're being watched or something, but I mean, I've had, I've had things kind of peek out from around trees at me from way far away, you know, and I just kind of catch it either out of the corner of my eye or, you know, just get lucky and turn around and see it. And whatever it is, I've never been able to catch it. I've walked toward them, you know, chased it. Um, but I've never been able to see what it is. But supposedly it's a creature called the hide behind. So it's a pretty interesting uh, pretty interesting story that you don't really hear about anymore. So uh, the Great Smoky Mountains is not a national forest. It is a national park. So if it is a national forest that this happened in, then that would be the Cherokee National Forest, which has some sections in the Great Smoky Mountains, uh, but it is farther down along the North Carolina, Tennessee line around Elizabethton, Johnson City, that type of area. More over toward Grandfather Mountain. I don't see why it couldn't be the one. You know, people get them mixed up. Sure. But, you know, personally, I don't know exactly where it came from. Right. I just know what she was talking about. And since it was close to home, you know, here in Tennessee, I thought, that's pretty neat. And then it ended up being a pretty cool cryptid, so. Yeah. May have to do a whole episode on those guys. Yeah, we'll check them out. Because um, something tells me we've we've got a personal story that could, could sort of clip into <laughs> that a little bit. Maybe. I mean, I know that. I don't know. Have we ever been together and seen something like that? Uh, the group we were with did. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. Even though it's probably just a bear. Probably just a bear. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. But that's a story for another time. Yeah, we can pick it up next episode, maybe. 
Um, also, no, I think the next episode we're going to try to do is, what is it, Land Between the Lakes? Yeah, the Beast of the Land Between the Lakes or Beast of the Lakes, something like that. Yeah, uh, um, just to give you is, guys a little teaser for that one, it's it's kind of a maybe a Bigfoot story or a Dogman story, but uh, it's a little bit darker than most of the ones you hear. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I looked a little bit up on it. It's uh, It's an intense one, or a little bit intense at times. Yeah, so I think that's what we're going to cover next time. Cool. Um, anything else you want to throw in before we sort of wrap this thing up? No, that's all I got for the evening. Cool. Well, again, I want to, uh, you know, thank all of you that have, have stuck around through our quiet spell. And, uh, you know, we, we ask that you always uh, like and subscribe us if you like what you hear. Share us around. Let other folks know what we're doing. If you've got a uh, request or uh, if you've got somewhere you'd like us to come check out, uh, you know, moving out of the, the pandemic, you know, if we've got time, we will uh, definitely love to travel and, and check a couple of things out. Um, I know we've got a couple that we've talked about doing. We just need to, to find time to, to get together which turns out to be a whole lot harder than it sounded like when we were originally planning this thing. Um, <laughs> but we'll get around to doing that. Uh, but if you've got somewhere you'd like us to check out, definitely let us know and we will uh, move that to the top of our priorities list and uh, see what we can do with that. But again, like and subscribe, check us out on Facebook, check us out on YouTube uh, and we'll see you next time. Y'all take it easy. <laughs>